What is up guys, Rick Kakas here, and in today's video we're going to be going over some of the rarest gear in Destiny right now, and how you can get it. Now the reason I'm making this video is firstly to inform those people who are unaware of this method. It's kind of been out for a while, but I think a lot of people just don't know about it and don't really know the gear associated as rewards with it. And secondly, this may not be out for that much longer. You may not be able to do this for much longer, and that's because with the release of the Rise of Iron expansion, we're likely to get a huge shift to the loot system and also to the available activities. So it is possible, like many other activities of the past and rewards associated with those activities, that you can no longer do this when the Rise of Iron comes out. So it's important to kind of get this out uh, to as many people as possible before it potentially becomes unavailable. So what am I talking about? What is this ultra rare gear and how do you get it? Well, simply put, some of the rarest gear in the entire game right now is the year one gear the year one weapons and the year one armor pieces now this gear is incredibly rare because it's been quite a while since this gear was available after the taken king came out all of the year one gear pretty much became unaccessible, became unable to acquire through normal looting. When you kill an enemy, no matter in which activity you're doing pretty much, you are going to get the new year two loot. Now you combine this with a kind of restrictive vault system, especially in the past we've had real issues, and a lot of people have deleted their year one gear along the road, and even more people have joined Destiny after the Taken King, or just before, and haven't been able to receive a lot of this loot. Now with the April update, some of the best year one weapons like the Shadow Price, like the LDR have been brought forward into year two. So a lot more people have an LDR now than had an LDR before the April update. Like before the April update, people who had an LDR, that was a very, very rare and desirable weapon. Because even though these year one weapons are kind of useless in PvE because their light levels are so low, they still function very well in the Crucible where there is no light level advantages. But there is still a bunch of year one weapons that haven't yet been brought forward like the LDR has that are still incredibly powerful in PvP if you can get good rolls on them. Like they're right up there with the top tier of competitive crucible weapons. And they're also extremely desirable for collectors. If you can get some of these old weapons, you know, the Salvation State, the Zero Point L Top, not many people have these year one weapons still still hanging around. I know some of you watching this video may have a few, but I'm sure you might be interested in, you know, expanding your collection if you are someone who enjoys getting those really rare pieces of loot in the game. And so, here's how to get them. What you need to do to still get the year one weapons and year one armor, if you're also interested in collecting that, is to matchmake in the original level 28 Prison of Elders. Now when you do this, pretty much all of it is going to be very normal until the very end screen. Anything dropping in the normal level 28 Prison of Elders, even if it's legendary engrams, even if it's, you know, blue engrams, anything like that is going to be of the new loot table. So if you kill a goblin that is from a year one activity, even like the Prison of Elders, he is going to drop an engram that is of year two. Except for, and this is where this method kind of works, the very end screen. You kind of trick the loot system because when Bungie does a big update to the loot systems, they change pretty much all enemies universally to drop the new stuff, but they don't mess with the activity specific rewards. So at the very end screen of the level 28 Prison of Elders, you are still getting the year one rewards. As you can see here, I got a decoherent engram. Now remember, engrams right now, they're no longer called decoherent engrams, they're called encrypted engrams, and you decode them and you get the normal year two stuff. But as you can see, if I go to the Cryptarch, 
it has a completely different screen for this decoherent engram. And if I exit out of that, I get a different screen for the normal encrypted engrams. This is really showing you guys, this is illustrating that they are two completely different things. They are two completely different loot tables. Now, don't worry, you don't just get the armor engrams. I actually myself got a secondary weapon engram and I saw my teammates get primary and secondary weapon engrams and they were decoherent engrams. So you can get these engrams and these engrams are extremely valuable because in the game right now, a decoherent primary weapon engram can decrypt into a ton of year one weapons, including the potential to decrypt into legendary year one primaries. Like for example, the up for anything auto rifle that has really good base stats. You can get one of these from one of these engrams, if you're lucky enough. However, the good news is that there are more rewards than this. I'm not just telling you guys to do this, get an engram and potentially have the small chance of decrypting a legendary. That can happen and give you, again, some of the rarest loot in the entire game right now. So few people have still those legendary year one weapons, but you can also get several other really awesome year one rewards. Firstly, legendary year one weapons just drop outright by themselves. We had a teammate get the truth serum auto rifle and I also saw someone get the high road soldier. So it seems like the strike exclusive weapons, which were once the strike exclusive weapons back in the days of the House of Wolves, are just random drops that you can get for doing the OG Prison of Elders. And some of these, like the high road soldier, uh, for an example, is super super good if you can get a good roll on that thing it belongs to a very very unique damage archetype like it and like one other legendary i think maybe one or two other legendaries ever belong to this damage archetype actually still kills in four shots in the crucible but shoots faster than all of the other four shot kill weapons shoots faster than something like the vision of confluence but still kills in four shots so if you're good with scout rifles this is one of the best scout rifles in the game you can get for PvP, and I'm dead serious. Furthermore, you can actually get legendary year one engrams. I didn't actually think you could, but it turns out, yes, you can. One of our teammates got a legendary engram for boots that was year one. Although it doesn't say like decoherent engram, it isn't named anything different. It still just says legendary engram. When he decrypted that, as you can see, he got year one boots. Now this is absolutely huge because it means you can also get year one primary legendary engrams, you know, heavy legendary engrams, all of that stuff is available to get by doing this. Now, with all that being said, I'm sure some of you are thinking, wow, well, I gotta go out, do this activity, you only get rewards on the end screen, and you have to get these legendary weapons that are super hard to get, and this all seems very difficult to do. And it is, like, to get the best, most rare weapons in the game, it's not easy. However, there is something else, there is kind of a little bit of a cherry on top, with getting some of these really cool, still pretty rare weapons. And that's actually going after some of the year one blue weapons in the game. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because some of the year one blue weapons have outrageously good starting stats. Like, they compete with what are now the legendary weapons. They more than compete with what are now the legendary weapons. Take a look at this. These are the top pulse rifles organized for stability in the game. So the top like four with the highest starting stability in Destiny period are all blues, are all year one blues. All of these kick ass in the Crucible. I remember going in, I did like uh, videos way back in the day on the top blue weapons. I did a video on the Dead Air and a video on the Evergreen and they were actually insane in the Crucible. When you have a starting stability of like 80 out of 100, you don't really need stability perks. So if you just get one sort of, you know, rangefinder type of perk, you have an extremely competitive, pretty rare, and really cool pulse rifle you can use in the Crucible. Like, not many people are still using an Evergreen. You're gonna get some messages if you're wrecking kids with that thing. It's gonna be pretty awesome.
But it doesn't just have to be pulse rifles. Take a look at the top auto rifles organized by stability. Number three and number four, again, this is in the entire game of Destiny, belong to blue year one weapons. So if you can get some of these weapons, again, they spawn with incredibly high stats and you don't really need, I know you only can get, you know, a limited number of perks compared to a legendary weapon, but if you're spawning with stability and if you're spawning with stats this high, you don't need a lot of perks to make it good. You just need like one perk to make it good and they only spawn with one perk so it works out perfectly. So if you're doing this method, if you're going after some of these incredibly rare year one weapons and armor if you're into collecting that, keep an eye out for the blue weapons. Don't just delete it if it's blue because some of them have incredibly good starting stats, definitely still competitive in the Crucible, will definitely turn some heads in the Crucible if you want to go in and be the only person using a certain weapon in that game. And lastly, some of the activity rewards you kind of want to keep an eye out for as well. Some of the OG Queen's weapons are pretty good, like the Herb Benevolent Sniper. You can get some pretty damn good rolls, and it's a pretty good PvP snipe rifle. Furthermore, the Shadow of Veils actually has an aim assist of 69. To put that in perspective, the Longbow Synthesis has an aim assist of 68. So yeah, the Shadow of Veils has more aim assist than the Longbow Synthesis, so keep an eye out for some of those weapons as well. So, in summary, if you're sitting there, you know, 335 light, you've kind of done everything you want to do and you're just waiting for the Rise of Iron, this is definitely something you can spend your time on. Going back and doing the original Prison of Elders and having a crack at some of the rarest, some of the best weapons in the game. Definitely like a cool thing for collectors to do as well. Now for those of you who do go out and do this, I would love for you guys to leave in the comment section of this video what weapons you actually get, like what legendary weapons you can actually get because I would love to know the loot table for this activity. Now that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. Now if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you want to see more Destiny content similar to this, don't be be afraid to slap that subscribe button. Now if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter, that's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.